Hello, Aztecs. Welcome to Lesson 5. Think of this lesson as an extension of the last one. Everything I teach you builds on previous lessons. There's still a lot of information for me to share, so pay attention to the concepts and definitions as I teach them. And realize that the things you are learning now will help you with future lessons. When I introduce new concepts, I will make references to the words you should already know. I won't re-explain previous things because you should already know them. If you need, you can always go back and watch any previous videos if you miss something. Let's start with the definition of hypertrophy. For our purposes, hypertrophy is the enlargement of muscle cells. We notice it as the thickening of muscles. It's the most noticeable when we haven't seen someone for a while. We see their muscle growth as they mature or because of the effects of exercise on their body. A bodybuilder is a perfect example of hypertrophy, decades spent on working out with weights to thicken muscle cells. The average person is the before picture and a bodybuilder is the after picture. Atrophy is opposite of hypertrophy, it is the decrease of thickness in muscle cells. Think of an arm or a leg after a cast has been removed. This is an example of atrophy. When you compare one limb to another, you really see the difference of what happens when you don't use your muscles for a while. There are ways to exercise that generate less hypertrophy and more of a lean athletic look in your body. Just because you lift weights doesn't mean you're going to choose to be huge. Different goals and workout plans mixed with a proper diet create different results for how you want to sculpt your body. We will get to these concepts on a later lesson. As I started to explain last lesson, there is more to weight training than just lifting weights. We covered these concepts the last video. Overload principle, intensity, overtraining, going through the motions, resting muscles at least two to three days between workouts, getting enough sleep at night, and eating properly. All of the above are a big part of the process, but there's still a lot more to it than that. I haven't addressed it yet, but unfortunately, anabolic steroids play a big part of the extreme hypertrophy we see in the bodybuilding world, and I need to address it. For our purposes, anabolic means bodybuilding tissue. Anabolic steroids help build muscle tissue and increase body mass by acting like the body's natural male hormone, testosterone. Just so you're aware, steroids cannot improve an athlete's agility or skill, just the size and the strength of his muscles. Pros and cons of steroids. Let's compare. First, the pros. One, doctors commonly prescribe steroids to help people with illness and recovery, which is not to be confused with illegal taking of anabolic steroids for bodybuilding size and strength. Two, as far as bodybuilding goes, anabolic steroids greatly increase your body's size and strength with the proper weight training. Now the cons. There are many long-term bad health effects from anabolic steroids. Kidney problems and or kidney failure, liver damage and tumors, an enlarged heart, high blood pressure, changes in cholesterol increasing the risk of stroke and a heart attack, even in young people, risk of blood clots, which can also kill. Your body cannot stay healthy with steroids over time, which means you would have to stop using them at some point or they would slowly kill you. But once you stopped using steroids, you would quickly lose most of the benefits of the size and the strength that you gained and be left with all the damage to your internal organs. All this from taking the steroids in the first place. So in the long run, if you can't keep the results from all the hard training and you are only left with the damage from it at the end, why do it? Your muscles would eventually atrophy back to your normal size after the hypertrophy gains once you stopped using the steroids. 
and you would have the terrible side effects of damaged organs that you need for life. This and many other reasons I didn't have time to mention is why I believe steroids are a really bad idea for you. What are supplements and what do they do? Supplements just mean instead of. So when you eat or drink supplements, you're not getting your nutrition from natural food like an animal or a tree or the ground. Instead, you're getting your nutrition from modified food that comes from a lab. They've changed natural food into something quick and packaged. Things like food in powdered form, like protein powders for shakes or protein bars. Things stuffed in wrappers and bottles and cans, which these days is hard to avoid. But if we can, we should. We want to try to limit the amount of processed food we put into our bodies and try to eat things that farmers grow. We will cover nutrition in more depth than other lessons. Back to exercise concepts. The principle of specificity states that to get better at a skill, you must specifically practice that skill. For example, you don't develop skill at throwing by practicing kicking, or your legs won't get stronger by lifting weights with your arms. Most athletes in the past played multiple sports. They would rotate to the next sport at the end of the season. This was a good concept for staying in shape over time and not physically wearing down on a sport. In other words, not overtraining on specific movements. But as a society, we've recently become very competitive and do everything we can do to get an edge on our competition. Because of this, our sports have become a year-round activity and those who don't practice year-round tend to fall behind and are not as skilled as those who are using the principle of specificity to its extremes to have an advantage over the competition. Some of the problems with this is that we mentally burn out on a sport at a younger age or injure ourselves at a younger age. For example, a young baseball pitcher throwing all the time gets very skilled at throwing a baseball and develops a lot of skill and control, but over time does damage to his arm because of all the throwing motions. If you're always pumping the brakes on a car, at some point you need to replace the brakes. And it's harder to replace an arm because of overuse. That's why pro baseball pitchers rotate, so that they have more longevity as baseball players. So as you can see, there are advantages to committing to the principle of specificity because you get better at the things you practice. But there can also be consequences with overuse if the body's not allowed to recover properly. This is very similar to the rest concepts covered in the last lesson. It's a balancing act between working on a skill to get better and overtraining and doing damage to a body. I need to do a good job of explaining this concept to you now so that you don't physically pay the price later. I have some personal examples of this. When I got to high school, I started lifting weights seriously, skipping very few days till I was around 45 years of age. That's three decades of serious weight training. At my peak, I was 55 pounds more of muscle than I am now. That's a lot of hypertrophy, and there's been a lot of atrophy since then, which is by choice. As I see it, big dogs die earlier than little ones. So I made a choice to be a little dog and downsize myself. I even had to stop exercising for a few years so that my body could recover. I now stay lean because it's less weight on my body, less stress on my old worn out joints. So instead of you going through unnecessary joint issues in your future, I would rather have you understand the value of balance in your workouts now. If I could do it again, I would have cut my lifting exercises in half and spent the other half doing a wide variety of exercises. This would have spread out the wear and tear on my body. Which brings me to cross training. What is it? The idea of cross training is changing up the way you exercise every day. Rotate your exercise every day with things like a walk, hike, jog, swim, dance, bike, sport, elliptical machine, stair climbers, Pilates, yoga, anything. The advantage of cross training is that it works a variety of muscles throughout your body 
and with different types of daily strains on different muscles and joints, your body can recover better, adding to a lifetime of exercise with less injury, as long as you stay balanced. The best results for long-term fitness is a variety in your workouts. If you want to get good at something, you need to use the principle of specificity and practice the thing that you're trying to get good at over and over. Just be aware of overtraining. And give those muscles plenty of recovery time so that they can repair themselves. Don't forget to take the quiz. See you next time.